You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe as the Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the ever-engaging, ever-scintillating Options Insider Radio Network. Hope you're having a good trading week, an interesting one, a lot to get to here on the show today of course if you like what you hear throw some stars a like whatever it is you can do our way to help new people continue to discover the content in these crazy markets we're all living through together and then of course if you want more content in your lives you want 200 plus exclusive episodes coming at you in your own exclusive podcast feed as well as live access to this everything else we do giveaways all sorts of fun the options slash pro or for you cool kids who want your own exclusive entrance Slash Secret Club. Place to go to check it all out for yourselves as we go around the horn and check out who's joining us on the old program today. First, we are joined by the rockingest of lobsters holding down the fort over there on the shores of Maine. Are they dark? Are they stormy? I guess we'll find out. Mr. Rock Lobster, a.k.a. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. How are things on the shores of Maine, sir? Um, they are not stormy. They are sunny and beautiful. And I finally got to empty my boat out because <laughs> it had about a foot of water in it from the rain over the last week. Well, there you go. So you need a boat to battle back against the clam pirates without the boat. Kind of hard to do that. 
And let's also go now to the hallowed halls. Usually he's beaming in from SIBO East. I do believe, though, he's actually down the street at SIBO proper, where we are joined once again by the flow master himself, Mr. Henry Schwartz, holding down the SIBO hot seat this week. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to Chi Town, sir. I thought you were back in SIBO East this week. Uh, no, I, I came into uh, to the old post office, our headquarters. We have a technology week, so. Uh, there are some pretty amazing uh, presentations on what the tech team is doing. I actually dug more into, you know, so SIBO is about, tw- uh, about 2,000 people. About 800 are on the technology team, if you can believe that. So there were presentations on how to save five microseconds in the matching engine, which were very interesting. And um, it gets into the weeds, but I think the part that's the coolest to me is that, you know, as much as you and, and I and your listeners love to dig into the nitty gritty of option flow and some of the mechanics of, you know, this, the, why somebody would do this trade, the tech guys here, the team, men and women, uh, they love to dig into kind of how can we shave microseconds uh, off of processes and, and make things more efficient. So it's very cool. I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to come in the weather in Chicago today and yesterday. I, I can't complain about that. It's like 70 and sunny. Yeah, and you picked a good couple nice of days to come to town, sir. You know, I, I recommend January as well. Good times <laughs> in the heart of nah. January. here, on, Right on the river. It's glorious here. You don't get any wind gusts at all here. Right on the river where uh, where the new SIBO HQ is. And also joining us, last but certainly not least, from the quiet hinterlands of Chicago, known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again by the unclest of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussauds from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, how go things in the hinterlands, sir? All is well, and um, it's always exciting to hear the exchanges uh, working to save us more microseconds as traders. Microseconds make dollars at the end of the day, at least for the exchanges, maybe sometimes for the end user as well. If you really got to get in and get out. But meantime, listeners, we really got to get into our first segment. It's time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there. And, you know, these markets, what's, what's our narrative been for the better part of this year, the last couple of years, actually, right, listeners? Is these markets kind of whistling past the graveyard, kind of rallying in spite of a lot of negative news out there, kind of hold your nose and buy AI, hold your nose and buy just about everything out there, because that trade has mostly worked, certainly for this year, and better part of last, maybe not last year. But outside of the tail end of last year, uh, most of the post-pandemic era, you know, being long, a lot of this stuff has worked out. Most days we come on the show and it's a gentle drift to the upside. Vols usually coming in, especially this year. And then post Powell, as the Fed is wont to do, uh, the Fed said uh, no more, no mas to all of that out there. Uh, So the market usually eating up all this stuff and saying, yeah, we don't care these days. Not so much Uh, S&P off sharply after Powell's announcement yesterday. And then, of course, uh, continuing that sell-off today, S&P off a little over 1% right now, hanging out right around the 43 half-level listeners. So 150 to nearly 200 handles below where we were not too long ago out there in S&P land. Dow off about half a percent, and NASDAQ off over 1%, about 1.1%. So market not exactly liking what Powell had to say. Not so much keeping things unched. As we talked about on the show, that was pretty much a done deal. The, I've never seen the Fed watch pricing in such certainty as I did with this rate announcement. 99%. That's as close to a done deal as I've ever seen, listeners. 99% that Powell and Ilk were going to sit on their hands, and they indeed did. It was the more hawkish tone afterwards that seemed to, to spook a lot of people out there. Now we're seeing some fluctuations because there's a little bit of a divergence between what Fed watch was pricing in going forward into next year versus what Powell's saying. So a little bit of intriguing action going on there. Maybe we'll get a little more into Fed watch a little bit later on this week in futures options listeners. But all that means a lot of red on the screen means our vol friends are getting a bit of a lift out there. VIX, when we kicked off the show, 1640 up about 2.4 handles. We were hanging out at about exactly 14 the last time we all chatted. So nice little boost there for Vol, challenging to make money on that one just because they were pricing so much juice 
into that upside in VIX going into that announcement, right? So you really had to be aggressive with flying it off or doing something else to to mitigate some of that outlay. Because even this, this two plus point pop, he could still lose money on some of those calls with what they were pricing in. So again, challenging times out there. You got to be a little bit nimble on the old trigger finger. VIX, 92, so getting frothy again, up about eight handles from where it was back on the Monday show. Uh, VXX taking about a two-point inhale, 22.30 when we kicked off the show, up exactly two points from Monday. Uh, UVXY back over a 15 handle, 15.10, up about 1.9 points on the week. SVIX finally back below 30, so we're not threatening a 35 handle anymore, listeners. 29 and three quarters, down exactly three points from the Monday show. UVIX back up over a three handle. Are you going to trade it again? Probably not. <laughs> 320 up about half a point. And Vol Q, 19 and three quarters up four tenths. I should be four points. Excuse me. Up four points from where it was this time last week. So Vol Q popping hard. Percentage wise, NASDAQ is, is kind of in line. It was leading the dance in terms of sell off earlier with the SP. SP has kind of caught up. But man, Vol Q popping hard out there. Let's go around the horn uh, the opposite of the way we started. Let's go out to. The SIBO hot seat first. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, an interesting week. Always fun when the when the Fed throws a little fuel on the old fire. What were your thoughts on what the Fed had to say yesterday and indeed the market reaction we're seeing out there today, sir? Well, it definitely was an interesting one. I looked at the um, the zero day straddle in SPX, and and you know I think it opened up around thirty bucks, which is up from kind of the non Fed days. It's kind of been in the twenty dollar range for uh, for that's kind of team seems to be where it's settled down. Now in August, that twenty dollars range tended to be a little bit cheap. I think the the buyers uh, did better in August, but you know it's really interesting to me in that. Um, the Fed did what people expected, and we kind of waffled for a little bit, and then we sold off, and that's that's some follow through today. But uh, you know, it's funny. I was at a, a volatility summit in New York last week. It's like conference season, so I get to call these cool things, and um, a lot of talk there about kind of the fixed income implied vol surface versus the equity one, and, and a pretty big disparity in terms of the message. So. Um, you know, maybe equities were a little complacent. I think we might have mentioned that last time around. Um, and so, you know, I, I think everybody right now is trying to figure out, like, OK, is this kind of a buying opportunity, a little bit of a blip? Is anything really changed? Is this something to get concerned about? Uh, you know, a couple of 50 handle days back to back that will get people a little bit stressed out. Um, but um you know, I've said this before, like I think a sh- I think the shakeups are good, right? It kind of uh, that's what creates the inefficiencies that that we love to look for. Uh, you know, people trade emotionally instead of uh, kind of, uh, you know, by putting a lot of thought into it. So uh, this is one of those times you want to have some dry powder. You want to pick your spots, uh, keep your trades reasonably sized. And there's opportunity out there opportunity indeed let's go out now to the shores of maine where they're always looking for opportunities particularly in the ball space mr rock lobster sir what were your thoughts on what transpired yesterday the market's reaction yesterday and the subsequent reaction we're seeing out there today sir uh dot plots you dot got plot. you got to follow the feds <laughs> dot plots or plot dots I don't, I, what are they i prefer measuring the briefcase still i'm still old school like that you know, as funny as my wife, she says, like, you know, now that we've been married for a while, um, she's like, you know, I don't ever remember you when your floor trader ever cared what the Fed did. And it, it got me a got me to a thinking different world. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, you know what? That's because it didn't matter because the. Uh, you know, the federal debt was a fraction of what it was 20 years ago. Government spending, fraction of what it was. Uh, we were running pretty much even, you know, surpluses or flattish, um, at least until W started spending money like a drunken sailor. Um, and then all of a sudden, we the Fed has like got its nose into the tent and has not left since 2008. Um, and you, you start to think about it and you're like, I'm not so sure this is really good. Um, and then of course, 2020, they did it again. Um, and then you could look back and argue that, wow, all of it was unnecessary <laughs> when you think about it, all of it. 
Um, so you have just the fact that they're running around like a drunken sailor in in the economy, uh, you know, with these huge moves. And at this point, I think, you know, uh, Powell has no choice but to dig himself out of 20 years of aggressively expansionary monetary policy. Got no choice. Clearly, everybody in Congress, Republicans, Democrats, whatever, uh, federal revenues steadily been going up for a very long time. And but spending just outstripping it like by a mile. Um, and when interest rates were zero, clearly politicians had no um, whatever. They had no uh, no self-control. And so anyway, that's what we got. So so Powell right now, he is sitting on. I believe a pickle like there's no I don't think there's an easy. So the easiest solution is with government freezes spending or reduces spending for the next 10 years. That would make it easy. Um, not sure that any politician <laughs> is willing to do that. Um, so the bond market is flexing its muscles and wanting higher rates uh, because right now we still have a, a, at least I would call it a partial you know, um, where the bond market is uh, is still an interest rate or interest rate sensitive tool. Like people can still look at it and make decisions. Um, it's not totally uh, manipulated by the Fed um, or in total control. But, uh, you know, again, that's another debatable thing. So I think the big question now is like you never like nobody ever sees a crash coming. Right. Never. Uh, there's every once in a while that guy. But, you know. <laughs> For the most part, they kind of sneak up on everybody. Um, this particular crash has been called for the what the last year um, or more. So you you look at this and and basically Powell and he said it every time I think every single time um, since he started raising rates he's like I'm not gonna make they're not going down until inflation stops and I think. We, even the four of us can probably agree or disagree on what makes inflation stop. Um, but the government spending an extra trillion dollars a year we don't have, I, I don't see how that's helping. But maybe people can disagree with me on that. But I don't see how that helps the inflation picture, um, especially since we've tested the upper bound of government spending and uh, what inflation is. So Powell stuck with it. Uh, he's keeping his uh, line and now 4500 is probably our new top until something changes. Maybe things, you know, but you you look at the wasteland of like, look at retail stocks, like Dollar General, stuff like that, Target, um, even Chewy, you know, um, they are crushing these consumer stocks. And now it's, I think it's a buying opportunity personally, but, um, uh, but you're, like you're still you still have this like this kind of pickle. And I think Powell is still juggling this thing and he's stuck with basically he's stuck with a bad deal. And it's he's not being helped by Congress or the executive branch uh, at all at this point. So, I mean, the Fed chairman can only do what he can do. Um, and I, I think the whatever giddiness everybody is feeling about rates dropping anytime soon. I think, uh, you know, at least short term, it got dashed and then we'll spend the next three months wishing it to be so again <laughs> when we get back to 4,500 again. You know, it's funny, as you said that, I was thinking back to my days on the SIBO and, and how important the Fed was. I mean, obviously, Greenspan was a big deal. You know, when I was in the SPX in particular, cause SPX, obviously more macro focused, we would pay attention, obviously, to Greenspan's where the jokes would come in about the about the briefcase and, you know, because CNBC would always make a big deal about it. Even then people would joke all day. You just hear yells of imminent. Cause that's what CNBC would have decision <laughs> imminent. So everyone would yell imminent all day long waiting for, you know, green space. So they had, they would have their fun with it. We would watch it out there. When I moved out to the single names, not as much. You're right. Cause it wasn't as much of a driver for those. Uh, and then you're right. We were nowhere near in the same scenario now where, you know, the fed back then wasn't literally propping up almost the entirety of the market. <laughs> so very different scenario. In fact, he had Greenspan actively pumping the brakes uh, back in the day. So a little bit different scenario out there than we have today. Uh, speaking of the Fed, we have to go to our number one resident Fed fan in chief, the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tucson. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, how excited are you that we are once again talking about your most favoritest of things, the Fed, sir? 
Oh, sorry for the delay. I just had to kiss my uh, Powell poster real yeah. quick before I started talking. I know you got the whole series of Fed Sherman action figures on your desk. I've seen your desk. <laughs> yeah. That Volker one's a collectible. Hold on to that one. If there's Fed action figures out there, I would actually buy one if there was one. <laughs> you probably would. Put it right next to your IRS guy. It'd fit well. That would be good. IRS and... Uh... Uh, Alan Greenspan, the, both guys that were worked worked in the 80s at the same time. So there we go. Um, yeah, yes, we did pause, but um, the fear of increasing rates in the future is something that um, looks very imminent, if you will. And uh, I think that's the obvious reason that the market's being driven down today. Uh, stocks are selling, bonds are selling, but... I, one of them, I really believe, is oversold for the day, and uh, I think we'll see where the money appears over the course of the, today or tomorrow, because uh, typically stocks and bonds don't go down together unless we have a, a, a period of a lot of rising interest rates, so that could continue to happen. Who knows? Um, but I think from the stock front, I, I, I do believe this is a buying opportunity. Uh, from the and my my rationale behind it is that uh, we did kind of top out at forty six hundred. Uh, in July, and we've come down a pretty decent amount. And so now that the market knows what's happening in that we have not gotten the all clear from the Fed, but the market knows we haven't gotten the all clear from the Fed yet, in the near term, uh, you could argue this is a buying opportunity because we have uh, not quite, but nearly a three, 250, 275 point pullback in the S&P 500. And that's fairly significant uh, over the course of a couple months. So I think that if you are a long term bull, as I am, and you have some dry powder and you are looking to get into something, uh, now might not be a bad time to do it. Uh, in terms of just some individual names that are lighting up my tape, if you will, uh, we do have uh, Microsoft is uh, coming back a little bit today. It got the tar beat out of it yesterday. And so uh, Microsoft's up almost $2 on the day. So they're going swimming upstream, if you will, on the day to day. And uh, just a couple other ones that just are kind of popping out to me. Of course, NVIDIA is down $8 on the day, 2% on the day. So we do have a kind of a hit there. McDonald's is down a little over $4 on the day. And um the rest of the of the big name movers, I mean, Tesla is down three dollars on the day, but all things considered, I don't really think that's that big of a move on a 50 point down day on the S&P 500. So where we're at right now, folks, is that um, it, it's kind of like that old song, should I stay or should I go? And then it's uh, should you stay in this market or should you go or should you get into this market or should you not? Um, whatever way you want to look at it. I think that this could be a setup for a buying opportunity because I know that uh, even me, the Uncle Mike Bull, if I were to buy more right now, it would be painful for me to do so. And usually when it's painful for you to do so, that's usually when it's a decent time to buy the dip. So with that, if you are going to buy the dip, make sure you manage risk well. You have a good allocation in your overall portfolio. But uh, in terms of where we are and the pullback with which we've had, the sun still rose today and the markets are still open. So that tells me there's a chance for bullish paper. Uncle Mike, 43 halves, all he needs to the downside. And he's gimme, gimme, gimme. Not waiting for it to crack 4,000 or anything. 43 half. that's all he needs. We've had our buddy, uh, Mr. Matt from Orats on the network a lot lately. And he's been on the 3,000 before 5,000 tip for a while now. So <laughs> he's been pumping that one for quite a while. So uh, yeah, he's, uh, he needs a little bit more sell-off before he's willing to buy. But interesting, listeners, might be time for another one of those uh, sentiment-type uh, questions of the week for next week where we gauge where are you comfortable getting back in if you are comfortable at all. I know if past is prologue, our audience kind of bearish. So I'm guessing 43 half is not going to be the level you're comfortable getting back in. But maybe we'll see. Maybe we put that out to you folks next week. Are you comfortable getting in here with more? Are you maybe waiting until, let's say, sub 4,000 back where we were before? 3,800, 3,600, somewhere around those levels. I'm curious. Inquiring minds want to know. Might make for a good question of the week. Producers, take note. Question of the week for next week. As we keep on rolling, let's get out to... What's lighting up our tape today? And you know what? As you might expect on a post-Fed day, 
we're seeing a whole heck of a lot of paper. So those dog days of summer, put them behind us. We're back in gear. We're back in session, listeners. We are firing with both cylinders here. Uh, VIX right now, 910,000 contracts on the tape. It really, it just takes Powell and company. They're kind of the only thing that seems like to be able to lift lift VIX to that 1M level <laughs> these days. But whenever they show up, whenever they're even talking, doesn't matter if it's a Fed day or Jackson Hole, whatever it is, whenever Fed and whenever Powell and company are, are out and about, VIX is threatening a million. And again, 910 already right now. Uh, the ADV only 618, so spoiler alert, that's going to be going up. In terms of the big dog out there today, it looks like about 75,000 of the October 17 puts have gone up and 58,000 of the Nov 17 puts. So I don't know. Let me look really quick. Let me pull up the old Flowmaster machine to see if that, yeah, it's a put spread. All right. Looks like they're rolling. Are they rolling short puts? Looks like they might be for 15 cents. Uh, Interesting. So, yeah, interesting stuff out there. Rolling your 17 puts in from October to November. It's actually opening on the October side. That's weird. All sorts of weird. Maybe they're rolling them up. <laughs> you don't see that too often. Uh, but either way, 910,000 contracts on the tape. Spy, you know it's going to be a banger day for Spy, and that is the case. Five and three quarters million. Pretty much exactly two million below their ADV of seven and three quarters million right now. So, spoiler alert, they're going to hit that. Uh, the S, 1.85 million. Let's do it, listener. Let's just go for fun. Again, fire up the old Flow Master machine out here, and let's see. How much of today's paper is zero day? I'm going to go out on a limb right now and say all of it. All of the top 20 are going to be expiring today. Let's see. Quick scan. Yes. Bam. 20 for 20 listeners. All zero day all the time. Let's expand it. Let's do a top 40 really quick. And now I see two of the D's 4400s going up. About 15,000 times. Looks like that's a combo there probably. And then one of the SEP 40, 4400 is the, is the strike du jour today. So I'm going to say it looks like about five of the top 40 are not expiring today. And that's it. 35 of the top 40 contracts in SPX right now, listeners, all going away the dodo today. So, again, that kind of just shows you where all the action has shifted. If you tune into Twifo a little bit later when we break it down in the E-mini, which we probably will be doing today again, you're going to see 50% of the volume in the E-mini these days, which is not nothing. It's going to be around 3 million contracts expires within usually four days so yeah it's just that's the way these equities are trading now listeners so, by the way the adv and uh, the s 2.82 million small caps banger day 1.01 million there as well for our friend iwm iwm off 0.8 percent right now so feeling its dark side oats as well the adv 775,000, and the q's 2.81 million the adv about three and a half million out there let's get out to the single names let's see what kind of banger day we are having in single names. And you, you know, on these macro focused days, listeners, sometimes the single names fall by the wayside. And that seems to be the kind of day we're having today. Because if you just showed me this top 10 list, I would have said, maybe you pulled this maybe mid-August. Doesn't seem like that exciting of a day. You know, 175,000 contracts is all it costs you to break into the top 10 today. That gets you to our friend Netflix bucking the trend rallying today up about one and a half points uh, trading 387.85, almost exactly 100 bucks below, though. It's 52-week high of 485, which came, looks like, not too long ago, just in July, July 19th. So Netflix having a rough couple of months after, prior to that, having a great year, rallying from 236 all the way to 485 even. And then since then, I've given up almost exactly $100 from there. So interesting times. Again, only 175,000 contracts, but that's all the cost. To break into the top 10 today, at number 10, number 9, the artist formerly known as Google, now known as Alphabet Class A, 241,000 contracts. This one taking a bit of a hiatus today, off nearly two points, trading 131.83, off about a buck 90, 1.4% or so out there. So apparently the tip of the AI spear taking a bit of a hiatus out there today. Again, good for number 9, 241,000 contracts. Speaking of the AI spear, listen, let's see how the... One of the cheaper offerings on that front is doing. We've heard a lot of talk lately. It's, it's been overdone, the hype for this one with AI. Maybe it's underdone. It's vacillated around quite a bit. This is, of course, Palantir, number eight, 283,000 contracts. Taking a break again today, so apparently we're on the overdone tip again today. Right around 14 and a quarter is where it's trading right now, off about half a buck. 
Yeah, over the last month, this thing has been as high as about 16 and a third, so a little over two bucks higher, and as low as pretty much right around here. It's about at the low for the month right now. Of course, you know on the year, it got up to about a little over 20 bucks, about 20 and a quarter, so we're almost exactly six bucks below that right now. But also a nice rally from where it was about seven and a half bucks back in May. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to joke, I would just miss selling those puts. And then the thing pretty much doubled almost overnight. So an interesting run for Palantir, giving some of that back right now. Number seven, again, kind of our usual suspects lighting up the tape today. It's Meta, 298, pretty much even off about a buck sixty. So they're taking a bit of a hiatus today. Back below the 300 level, 288,000 contracts for Meta and the number seven spot. Number six, Uncle Mike's favorite. Just talking about them. They're softy. Uh, 388, so exactly 100,000 contract jump between 7 and 6. That's interesting. 388,000 contracts. That gets us to Microsoft up a little over 2 bucks, about 216, trading 322.93 right now. Let's see, on the day, it was as low as 315, so they popped it hard off that, and the high was 325.35, so over $10 range on the day today. So action-packed day for Softy coming in at number 6. Uh, number 5, first half of the chip zone listeners, AMD. 462,000 contracts. AMD taking a hiatus today off about three bucks, trading a little under 97 and a half right now. On the month, they have come for this one as well. It's off about a little, almost 11 bucks on the month out there. So taking a bit of a hiatus this month. Of course, on the year, they rallied it as high as 132.83. So obviously, we have come off a wee bit. But then again, a year ago, it was trading 74 bucks. So AMD still net up nicely on the year. Good for number five today. Number four, right behind it, keeping it in the A-themed tech names. It's the Amazonians uh, taking a break today as well. Off four and a half bucks or three and a third percent, trading 130 and three quarters. So uh, they are coming for the Amazonians. They're another one that's kind of fallen off hard since yesterday. They were trading almost, actually, they hit their 52-week high yesterday of 145.86. Since then, obviously, given a good chunk of that back, trading right around 130 right now, 130 and three quarters. So. Actually, yeah, with the high 145.86, they've given up pretty much a little over exactly 15 points right now. So interesting stuff. So they are now net down on the month, even though on the year, uh, they are year to date, let's say. They're up, yeah, they're up about 52% still year to date. So nice run for them. Again, 654,000 contracts and the number four spot. And then keeping it in A-related tech names is number three. Back to back to back, triple A. We've got uh, Apple, 732,000 contracts on the tape. Apple kind of off slightly today, but a bit of a rounding error, pretty much on trading right around 175 and a half right now. Looks like it's had an almost $2 range of the low right around here and the high 176.30. Actually, the low, I'm sorry, 174.44 and the high 176.30. So almost exactly $2 range on the day. Obviously, uh, a wee bit of retracement from their 52 week high of nearly 200 bucks, but also still about 50 handles north of their. 52-week low, a little bit shy of 125. Again, good for 732,000 contracts today. Number two, going back to AI. This is the literal tip of the spear in the AI wave right now. It's, of course, NVIDIA taking a break today as well. Off seven and a quarter or one and three quarters percent. Trading 415.12 right now. On the month, it's off about 55 bucks or 11 and a half percent. It hit its high for all for the year. Yeah, about 503. That was back in late August. They've given up almost... Almost $100 from there right now, trading 415 So, of course, if you look at this 52-week range, the low is 108 the high 502 listeners. Almost a $400 range. Oh, man. My goodness. So, yeah, if they're giving up 50 bucks on a month, that's a rounding error. My goodness. The insanity that is packed into NVIDIA listeners. 870000 I don't mean to besmirch the NVIDIA bulls. If you're having a good time out there, have at it. But it's, yeah, wow. We were joking about the PE out there when it was a third of what it is right now, <laughs> saying, wow, who would buy this? Lo and behold, everyone. So uh, intriguing stuff out there. And then number one, you know what it is, listeners. It's a day that ends in Y. Nothing can unseat the T King. It is Tesla, 259 and a half, off about exactly three bucks today. On the month, it's kind of been a topsy turvy ride. They're net up, though. They were trading 231 a month ago. So they had that nice upgrade from Morgan Stanley. It seems like they're still kind of. Feeling some of the largesse from that, even though they have given some of that up now. 1.64 million today, good for the number one spot. Earnings wise, not a ton to unpack out there today. General Mills, KB Homes, and FedEx yesterday. A Darden restaurants today, 
Looks like the season's still hanging out at about exactly par 100%. You can find all those reports for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Meanwhile, we got to get on going, listeners, right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. everybody let's unleash the eye of the flow master see what he's fixing his gaze on today it was like his first victim this week slash celebrity inductee into the odd block hall of fame here we shall see is a newcomer to the show it is sprouts farmers market ticker symbol sfm looks like this is a organic grocery train out of the southwest so probably why we haven't seen them we don't have them around the shy town area uh trading forty dollars and ninety cents up about a dime today on the year, also like a good year for organic groceries, 27 and a quarter a year ago. This thing's been on a nice run, and it's mostly been straight up. In fact, they're hanging out right now, right at pretty much their 52-week high, uh, 50, 40 cents below it. They were 41.28 earlier this morning and 40.88 right now. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much at their 52-week high right now. So interesting, a newcomer, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what did your eye spot out there today in our new favorite, Sprouts Farmers Market Inc., sir. Uh, so we, the trade I saw in Sprouts is a 2,000 lot of calls. Uh, and that compared to average daily volume in the whole thing is about 600 contracts. And um, as you said, it's it's a, it's a fancy supermarket. I think I've been to it. It's kind of like a Whole Foods, but the aisles are lower. So it's a, it's a more like comfortable shopping experience. But uh, what we saw was a buyer of 2000, the October 20th, which is the regular October expiration, 43 strike calls. They only paid 46 cents. There was no open interest. So we know it's opening stock was uh, around 4095 or stock was around, uh, no, it was actually tied. It was tied to shares at 4095. So this is a good example of it's directional, right? It is a call buyer, but uh, you you do want to keep in mind some trades are tied to a hedge, which is commonly done by institutional traders to minimize the delta impact. Right, nobody has to go out and hedge it. I mean, this this stock only trades a million, one point three million shares a day. So you know, fifty thousand shares of um, of delta uh, is it is it significant if you got to go buy it? Um, but when I see this on a stock that is kind of near its all-time highs or, or has had a really good run, uh, I kind of think of it as a stock – I think there's a decent chance it's a stock replacement trade, So, meaning that they've ridden the stock, they've made money on it, they're getting a little bit nervous, and they'd rather have kind of the risk profile of just owning some calls where your, your risk is what you paid for the calls. They still get the upside if the thing continues up, and it's only $2 away from – from this stock price. So in case there's a deal or something, they'll still get to participate. But if this thing, you know, heads back down towards whatever, 35, they only have, you know, really the 50 cents at risk. So it's that, that was a, an interesting one. I mean, it's funny when we're having kind of a bit of a downdraft, it's certainly harder to find this speculative style flow. Um, but this one, this one seemed to qualify. Welcome to my world, sir. <laughs> oh, all you can do is find puts today. What's going on? Why can't you find crazy calls? Yeah, because everyone on the mother is selling everything they own right now. <laughs> uh, but interesting stuff. Yeah, you're right. It does have a bit of the whiff of stock replacement to it. Not huge. Also, interesting strike for stock replacement. They're not going in the money, which is the usual choice. They're going a little bit out of the money. I guess they wanted to keep their outlay low. So in which case, maybe they are really kind of done with this thing. And they're just, ah, well, I can't blame them. The stock's had a nice run. And then if they get more upside, they play, but otherwise they're not risking too much. Usually you might see someone pick up, I don't know, a 35 or even lower strike and get a little bit more delta on there. But yeah, not seeing that now. So kind of interesting. Mr. Rock Lobster, are you a huge fan? Do you have Sprouts Farmers Markets up there on the shores of Maine? And then B, what do you think of these calls? Do you think this is stocky placement, sir? Um, I don't think we have Sprouts Farmers Markets. Um, uh, We are waiting for a market basket to come our way, though which is like one of the best markets ever. Um, anyway, that's a side point there. Um, oh, I realized, dang, I got to jettison some mix calls because. Um, so 
Oh, son of a gun. I thought I was going to get a nice price for him. Anyway, sorry about that, listeners. Um, I, I think this, the stock replacement could be a good, you know, a certainly you don't know exactly what's going on, but that's as good a reason as any. The only thing I would say is, um, you know, you're buying the Oct 43s. That's a fairly, you know, that's like a, that's a pretty aggressive purchase. Um, if, you know, unless you think something's really going to happen, you know, but, you know, but it, uh, on, on the sniff test, I mean, it, we're 4550 on the call. So their timing can't be too bad on that one. So um, I, as like I, I said, I don't think that's a, you know, I, it certainly it could be a, a stock replacement, uh, but it's a fairly like aggressive call purchase. It's almost like, you know, you're, they're kind of hoping against hope that the that they get some kind of you know super rally here you know into the end of the year. So um, that's it, it's a fairly aggressive uh, call purchase, I would say. Yes, um, an intriguing strike selection here for this one, listeners. You like a little bit of Sprouts Farmers Market? Do you have this one in your neighborhood? You're going to trade these calls? Hit us up. Let us know as we go on into our next name victim celebutant. Call them what you will here. On the old Flow Masters odd block here. Let's go out to this is another newcomer to the odd block here. This is Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF. Say that one five times fast, listeners. Ticker symbol K Web, K W E B, trading 26 and a half bucks right now, off nearly 60 cents or a little over 2% today. On the year, it's kind of been all over the place and kind of right back here for the most part. It was trading twenty five sixty six a year ago, so we're up eighty six cents on the year, listeners. Not a huge banger. Uh, they came for it right away, though. They drove it down to its low for the year of seventeen and a quarter in October of last year. So, I guess if you want to look at it from that perspective, since October of last year, it's looked all right. Did a lot of living between September and February of this year because they crushed it to the low in October. Then they rallied it to its high for the year. Take a guess. Not quite February 2nd, listeners, like a lot of names this year, but pretty close. January 26th, it hit $36.19. They pretty much doubled it, more than doubled it from the low from October up to January 26th. And then since then, it's kind of been mostly gently drifting back down to about 26. It had a brief dalliance back to about 32 at the end of July and then gave it all right back down again. So for the most part, since January this year, it's been kind of Drifting back down to where it is. Almost unched for the year. Not quite. 26 and a half bucks right now. Uh, that said, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what did you notice out there? And another newcomer. This is Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF, sir. <laughs> uh, so this is the biggest trade we've seen in the market today. We got, we got a couple hours left. But this is a 62,000 lot call spread. And, you know, as you said, it's a China ETF. It's got things in it like Alibaba and Tencent and, uh, you know, kind of all the China ADRs that that, uh, you you might be more familiar with. But somebody bought the November 34-35 call spread for four cents, 62,000 times. And this is when the ETF was twenty six fifty nine. So uh, that's a fa- that's a very far out of the money trade. They only paid four cents for it. Uh, at that size, that's about two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy that spread. And you know, as I think most people know, uh, a dollar call spread can be worth a dollar. So the potential payoff is is like six million bucks if it if if K Web were to jump. I mean, literally almost uh, 30%. Uh, but, you know, China is is kind of a macro story, right? There's a lot of speculation about deflation and kind of how the government there, uh, you know, is kind of uh, messing around with the economy. And so uh, I don't know. I mean, as, as a lottery ticket type of trade, uh, I don't think I'd want to be the guy short this call spread for four cents. And, you know, it's got two months, two months to live. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen in two months? (laughs) This definitely qualifies as odd block nonsense. I love this. 63,000 of the Nov 34, Nov 35 call spread. Listeners, as the flow master said, for four cents. There's so much to unpack. Why are you doing that? Why are you buying a $1 wide vertical? Why are you buying it on the 34 strike? Why are you selling the 35s at that point? (laughs) Just get in. Go in. Go in for 11 cents. Do you need to save the seven cents? 
At that point, you're already in. Pay the 11 cents. And now you buy this spread, right? It gets all the way to 34. Are you going to be happy with this spread? Or are you going to say, man, I should have bought maybe the 27s or something with a little bit more meat, right? Maybe I do the 2730 or I do the 2730, 33 fly or something, you know? Yeah, there's so many ways. He's missing out on all of it all the way up to 34. I don't know, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but he is only paying four cents. This reminds me, there was someone on our Twifo show used to do like religiously 100,000 contracts a week in WTI of a $1 wide vertical out there as well. And I always scratch my head saying, what, what are we doing? Why Someone loves their broker. I don't know, Mr. Rock Lobster. This has the whiff, the air of, dare I say it, a love your broker trade, sir. Do you concur? <laughs> uh, uh, kudos to Henry for finding the biggest trade that went up today and also quite possibly the most ridiculous. Yes, the most nonsensical <laughs> trade. Of the, of the, this might go on our on our annals looking back for the year, sir. We might have, might have to highlight I, this I had, I had I had to say K-Web has broken my heart because I kept thinking, you know, Oh, Chinese internet, how could it go wrong, right? There's 1.2 billion, you know, educated Chinese, like, it's going to it's gonna be awesome. And it's been nothing but a tale of misery and woe for me, so I don't look at it anymore. Every time it goes in, like, in, in like 20 bucks, I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Um, uh, it you know, and it, it seems like that, but... You know, it was a thirty-six dollar number at the beginning of the year. So, you know, if if China ever decides to not declare war on their um, internet businesses, <laughs> that, as in the PRC, um, I think this trade might have a shot. But <laughs> I don't know if it's going to have a shot between now and November. But it is it is impressive in its size and uh, silliness. The sheer nonsense and audacity of it yes, uh, yes. I, I, this yes. is this is going in our our document for the end of the year we'll come back to this yeah later. yes Henry, i have a feeling we'll be talking about brought the goods yeah. this time i have a he feeling we'll be goods. talking about this again in december for our best <laughs> slash worst of the year this is a good one Sixty five thousand of these <laughs> <laughs> listeners you too can play it's only four cents get in there <laughs> Yep. Do, do your first 500. You know what? Bucks. It's easy money. Exactly. Easy money. Exactly. How can you go wrong on any of this? Wow. This is uh, this one brings a smile to my dark and cynical face. So, yes. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. One more here. Let's go out to a name we've actually heard of this time. It is DraftKings. Haven't talked about this one in a long time, listeners. Uh, ticker symbol DKNG. They were regulars for a while and kind of have fallen off our radar here, even though the stocks had an interesting run. Off a buck today, trading 29.06, so not looking great today. Let's see. Over the past month, they rallied it up to, let's see, the high for the year was just, looks like, in July, 34.5 bucks, trading 29 now, so they have come off it a bit. Of course, a year ago, they were trading 16 and three quarters, so they pretty much have doubled, and they've more than doubled. They've almost tripled from their low, which was November of last year. Or no, actually, it looks like it was December of last year of 1069. So I recall DraftKings hovering around that level, and that's probably on the last time we talked about them, actually. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, the nice run for them, up uh, about 12 and a half handles or 73% just this past year. If you go year to date, they're up 18 handles or 162%. So intriguing stuff. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what did you notice out there in DraftKings today? Is it possibly as ridiculous as what we just talked about? Uh, no, it's not that ridiculous. This one might be a little bit more. Um, well, they're both bold trades, though. This, so this is a big put seller. I got to say, I just, you know, I do a lot of talking to market participants about kind of interesting ways people are trading, and and constantly people are saying, well, you know, when you in these sports betting apps, you can do all sorts of really interesting kind of dynamic uh, bets, right? Like, what are the chances that the quarterback's going to come back after you know hurting his ankle in the first couple minutes in that Jets game? And all of a sudden, people are actually you know wagering on these things. So I just installed DraftKings, uh, and I think because I'm in Illinois, maybe I can actually bet. In New York, I think it's still illegal. But um, this was a put seller the of 11,000 of the November 22 and a half puts for 48 cents. So, uh, you know, stocks at 29. So, you know, this is seven dollars below. Um, but it's a decent sized trade. 
and it is opening, and it kind of feels like one of those trades where somebody is very comfortable owning the stock if things get dicey and it gets down there. And, um, you know, and, and a little bit, you know, the, I think the gambling sites are viewed a little bit along the, the lines of, you know, some of these kind of dollar store uh, stocks that tend to do do well if the economy does run into trouble. And I think, you know, that's – you know that's what everybody is kind of trying to figure out and speculate out right we had we had a we had a few months there where we were kind of perfectly on track for this soft landing and now all of a sudden uh this pendulum has swung and everybody's like whoa no now you know the the way the fed's talking uh it's not going to happen so you know, I think we're going to continue to kind of oscillate between these, this, the fear and the greed, and you know, we won't know until it's kind of too late if it, if it, uh, if we manage to have this soft landing. But uh, this was this was an interesting one, and you know what? On a, on a, you know, when we've had a, a couple hundred S and P points uh, disappear, the market's feeling weak for somebody to come out and sell a big chunk of puts and take that kind of risk. Uh, you know, that's a pretty definitive statement. Yeah, I don't hate these. They got nearly 50 cents for them. You're right. The level, 22 half, uh, you can't fault that. I mean, it doesn't look great when you look at the 52-week low of $10.69, but where it's been hanging out recently, 34 and a half bucks on the high, I think most people would take it at around 22 and a half. You're right. It's an interesting company. We, they, are, they are available in Illinois. I use them all the time here, uh, Mr. Flowmaster. They do have some fun prop bets. You're right. They make it interesting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what are your thoughts here on these puts? These line in the sand puts and DraftKings. Um, like DraftKings is a company, and like it's cool, and I I never so I always look at it with like because remember Penn bought Barstool, but then they sold it back for a dollar, whatever. Then they ESPN was going to do some of their online gambling and whatever. So I I view both of those companies as like okay, well one has. Um, online gambling, and I've had this 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 Arbon off and on, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I thought it would have worked great by now, but like long pen short DraftKings, because market cap on DraftKings is fourteen billion dollars. The market cap on Pen, which is sitting on a ton of assets and cash and everything else, is three and a half billion dollars, um, and the revenue is twice what DraftKings is. Um, so I none of this computes, of course, in my brain. So it's a total failure of, uh, of of brain. <laughs> so um, I think it is bold. Uh, the put seller probably will make money, um, but I think uh, I think Penn is a better purchase uh, with this. But so far, uh, I've been wrong because Penn just is <laughs> will not go up for any reason at all. Um, and, and granted, they do own physical, but. I think the DraftKings put sale is, you know, it's it is bold and aggressive, and maybe that's also just a symptom of, um, you know, the market that we have right now. Um, because generally, when people are selling puts, they don't think they can make money buying calls. So it's a definitely a different type of market. But I think twenty two and a half getting some actual yield for that. I mean, that would. That would go uh, would fit in my yield tank because you're getting about one percent a month uh, to buy the stock at twenty two and a half, which is you know not a bad spot to purchase this uh, purchase this stock. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a I think it's a pretty like it looks like like a good put sale. Just got to see sort of how it all works I think out. You're talking yourself into a put sale, maybe for oddities, sir. What do you think? You gonna you gonna sell some of these <laughs> DraftKings? I can hear yourself talking yourself into a lather. Oh, we shall see, <laughs> listeners. As well, we I've keep... been doing it wrong the whole time, yeah. so might as well. Might as, might as well just keep going. In for a penny, in for a pound. As we are in for the final segment of the show, listeners, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, it is time to go around the block, tell you what we're keeping an eye on until our next episode on Monday. Now, this week, it was pretty easy, all eyes glued to Powell and company, but what's coming up next is the question, and for the answer, we turn to the one, the only, the official, Uncle Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until our Monday episode? <laughs> I am the official one. Uh, 4300 is one. <clears throat> We're also getting making new lows or looking to make new lows in the bond world. So keep an eye on bonds, folks. Uh, what's the market and what is the bond market anticipating that Powell's going to do? I think that's an important question to ask over the course of these next few weeks. 
You're our sentiment guy. Do you think it's time to do that sentiment poll again with our audience? See where they're comfortable nibbling, sir? Would you be down for that, Uncle Mike? Official Uncle Mike? I'd be about 50% bullish on wanting to do that sentiment poll. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) The Uncle Mike, 50% guarantee, as always out there. Let's go around the horn. Let's go to the Rock Lobster, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode? Um, You know, just this goofy market. Um, You know, it looks like 4,300 held or 43. I don't know. I I mean, like levels, I'm I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask. Uh, Mostly I just, hey, the market stopped going down. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, 4337, that was a, like kind of a recent low and we haven't, you know, kind of sniffed anything close to that since. So I think at this point we might be back into just one of those markets where the fed seems to be out of the picture for a while and we actually have to have real news to make stocks move. Uh, and generally that's probably not bullish VIX. So, uh, and I think, and I believe one more stat, we have not been able to close down one and a half percent, I think in six months. It's a very, very long time period. So I don't know if we're going to, I don't think we're going to do that today, but, um, you know, I'm just looking to see if there is actual real sort of people just selling stuff and they you're getting out, you know, I got to get out. So uh, as of right now, that's not what I'm seeing. So i I would expect if we don't go down, we start kind of meandering back up the next day. Seems like, as Rock Lobster alluded to, we have maybe hit the nadir of the sell-off, at least for now, listeners. Looks like we bounced off that 43.50 level right around 43.61 to come into the end of the show. Still off almost a full percent, about 0.95%. So maybe we're just pausing in the sell-off. Uh, VIX also pausing as well. Was at about 16.40 when we started the show and about 15.80, or so right now. So coming in a little bit there as well. But again... Could just be taking another breath before we take the next leg down, or we could, as we saw a lot in August, just reverse right back up. We shall see. Mr. Flowmaster, the last word is yours, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance next week? Uh, so I agree. This, this, we've had a decline, but it, so far it's it, there's no panic, right? And, uh, you know, uh, I think all traders love to kind of look for the panic because that is when things get really crazy. And as long as you don't get caught up in it, uh, you can do well. Uh, there's a few earnings I'll be looking at. I think Nike and Carnival are end of this month. Uh, and mostly, you know, I, I guess I'll be looking for kind of, you know, whether things level off and um, and we start to kind of head back to the upside and that music means we are heading out at least for this show don't worry back in a little bit with this week and futures options to continue the analysis parte on the futures options front but before we do that let's go around the horn we'll start with the flow master sir where should folks go if they want to kick the tires and light the fires on all this SIBO goodness all this cool data and flow that we've been analyzing all show long sir uh, you can find all the awesome platforms and data sets we have at SIBO.com slash RMA for risk and market analytics. And um, keep an eye on the on the zero-day stuff, too. We're, we're working on some really cool new analytics. I'll give you a preview of that when we when we get it put together. I'll have to get your new colleague there, Mandy, on the show. I know she did a big report on all things zero-day. Maybe break it down for our listeners a little bit. What do you think? Absolutely. I can. I will, I will tell her we, we want to hear from her. She's been on the show in the past. And she's back at Credit Suisse back in the day, I think, when uh, the last time we chatted with her. So she's had a few incarnations, I think. But, yeah, crunching the numbers on all things zero day. I think our listeners are rapacious, to say the least, when it comes to wanting to know more about all things zero day. So maybe, maybe look forward to that on a forthcoming episode, listeners. And you always look forward to the uncleist of Mike's, even if he is only willing to give you his 50% guarantee. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to debate with you, maybe they want a 51% guarantee, where should they go? What should they do? Check me out on Twitter at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W, or check out my website, stcharleswealth.com, if you are looking for a financial advisor. There you go. Check them out on the old Twitters or on the old interwebs. And last but not least, when he's not bailing out his boat, maybe he's bailing out your portfolio with a little bit of all love. Mr. Rock Lobster, where should folks go if they want said bailout, sir? <clears throat> yeah, go to optionpit.com. Uh, look for any of my products. And if you heard the show, you get uh, 10% off any Option Pit product. There you go. Optionpit.com for some uh, just general option love. General option. You think the rock lobster. You think general option love. <laughs> Hit him up over there. Optionpit.com. The place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. We got to get on out of here. If you're hanging out in the pro hangout, we'll be back 
in a little less than half an hour now with the one, the only Dan, the man, Gramsler, to break down all things going on on Futures Options. If you know him, you know he'll have a few things to say about all the products. So we'll see how many we could cram into an hour, listeners. It's going to be a challenge, but it's always a fun one when Dan joins us. So stay tuned for that. Coming up a little bit, he'll be holding down the CME hot seat there. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for all things volatility. And then back again after that, I do believe the Rock Lobster has recovered from his hiatus. I don't think he's going to be beaming in in from the middle of a freaking hurricane. So we should be able to hear him this time on Options Oddities after that. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what maybe maybe he sold some of those DraftKings books. I guess we'll find out tomorrow, listeners. And then, of course, back again on Monday. Another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.ciboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>